friends, welcome back to another video tutorial from Shomu's Biology. In this series of video lectures, we are talking about the wastewater treatment process in a typical wastewater treatment managed facility. And we started to talk about the preliminary wastewater treatment. We've also seen the primary wastewater treatment. Now, in this video lecture, we will be discussing about the secondary wastewater treatment. And the secondary wastewater treatment is also known as the biological wastewater treatment, where we actually use microorganisms like bacteria, fungi, as well as protozoa uh, to, to, to utilize all the organic compounds which are present in the wastewater and so that we can reduce the concentration of all those organic compounds in the wastewater and make the water more purified. Now, the secondary wastewater treatment is a crucial, or uh, we can say a heart of the wastewater treatment process where most of these organic materials are actually being taken up and utilized by the microorganisms and that benefits us in many ways because you can you can simply say can can we simply separate uh, or, or, or kill all those organic compounds with the help of chemicals the answer is yes but the chemicals that we use to kill them is toxic and it's very important to remove those toxic chemicals and all the techniques that we need to invest and uh, to remove those toxic chemicals out of the water will cost us hugely more in, in contrast, using biological agents like bacteria, fungi, or protozoa reduce that huge cost of uh, chemical treatment. So that's why we use it, and it's far cheaper. We simply introduce few of the microorganisms, and they will do their job naturally. So it's kind of uh, ecological augmentation that we can do with the help of utilizing microorganisms. So remember in this whole big picture and overview of, of our wastewater system which we started to talk about in the very first lecture, we've talked about the preliminary treatment, we've talked about primary treatment and right after the primary treatment, uh, the effluent comes into the secondary treatment. In the secondary treatment, there are two different chambers, two different components. One is the aeration portions or aeration chamber. And then after uh, the, the effluent is aerated, it's transported to the secondary clarifier, which is a large tank like the primary clarifier. So again, the difference between primary and secondary clarifier is in the primary clarifier, we're separating larger particles, solid particles from the water with the help of skimmers. While in the secondary clarifiers, we're not using any skimmer, we're simply using microorganisms. And those microorganisms are working. Like It's like a huge culture basin for microorganisms. So that uh, water filled with organic compounds acting as their media and microorganisms utilizing their media for their own growth. So this is where we have this uh, in, in the secondary clarifier once after the aeration. Why aeration is required? Because aeration is an important step where uh, which actually reduce the odor a little bit and also uh, it, it creates a little bit of movement in the water and, and it's kind of mixed the whole water with one another it's because right before this we have a primary clarifier where it's settled down for like five six hours and then we're transporting it to the secondary treatment facility so in the secondary treatment facility uh, before going into the secondary treatment we aerate the air, like water a little bit uh, air is added so that the microorganisms the air with microorganisms can do their job better as well as it reduce uh, odor a little bit so both this thing works after the aeration the effluent goes to the secondary clarifier and again it's, it's a giant vessel and there is no net movement of water so it's a fixed giant vessel the water movement is very low so that the solid is getting settled and what kind of solids we're talking about we're talking about any other debris or, or materials produced by the bacteria after utilizing uh, the dissolved organic materials that are present so they are utilizing that and their sediment so let's talk about this uh, the methods that we use in case of the secondary treatment can be divided into two uh, it can be divided into suspended culture or attached culture or we can use aerobic or anaerobic culture because we are using microorganisms uh, the type of culture it can be suspended suspended culture means it's simply microorganisms given on a large giant vessel secondary clarifier and it's water the environment is watery there's no solid surface so microorganism in the water it's doing its job in the water and any debris produced are settling to the bottom with gravitational force that is suspended culture while attached uh, culture or attached growth is when we use large bed ma made with like rock or solid particles, solid beds. And on the top of the solid bed, uh, we have the bacteria, fungi, protozoa, everything producing a biofilm. And we sprinkle water on top of that biofilm so that 
uh, the biofilm receives the water and taking all the nutrients and the water continues to move its journey from the top of the biofilm to the bottom of that solid surface and they are collected by a different pipe and transported to the next site of the treatment. So this is attached growth. So generally the suspended culture is sometimes preferable, sometimes the attached growth is preferable because both has their own advantages and disadvantages. Similarly, you can also use microorganisms which are aerobic aerial respirating or aerobic respirating. Aerobic microorganisms, uh, they simply, uh, they take up all the organic matters and they stabilize uh, that, they, they convert that into, they take energy from that and they leave and uh, the, the other excretory material that they produce is then settled down to the bottom. And the same thing is possible for anaerobic microorganisms as well because in anaerobic microorganisms they don't generally uh, grow well in presence of oxygen. So for them to work well, we need to go out of the oxygen. Now we generally sometimes use anaerobic microorganisms to, uh, to remove certain organic compounds which cannot be removed well by anaerobic microorganisms. But generally we use anaerobic process. Now this submerged, uh, this suspended growth is mostly dealing with the aerobic microorganisms. While in attached growth, we can use both aerobic as well as anaerobic microorganisms. I can show you a picture of that. But before before that, let me also talk about few facts regarding the microorganisms that we use in secondary wastewater treatment. Facts like a typically domestic wastewater treatment prior to entering the treatment plant contains 1 lakh to 10 lakh microorganisms per milliliter. And those microorganisms can do their own job, but we still need to add some other microorganisms for outside because we know what kind of typical waste material that, that enters inside the wastewater treatment plant and that's what we do. The moment wastewater treatment, wastewater is transported, entered into the plant, we take a sample and then we analyze that sample and what we check what kind of uh, organic matters are present, what kind of solids are present. So depending upon that, we use a different array of microorganisms and we, we put it from outside. Although uh, this sewage itself contains a huge load of microorganisms, but still Sometimes we also need to add microorganisms of our choice from outside so that the work can be done in a better way. While all microorganisms found in wastewater treatment plants have some role in the decomposition of waste, probably the three most significant are bacteria, fungi and protozoa. And bacteria, a uh, primary role of decomposing the wastewater compounds, forming settleable solids at times and, and, and it's also sometimes may create operational problems, but that's not a thing to worry about here because bacteria is doing a wonderful job of taking out all the organic materials from the from the wastewater and converting them into settleable solids because the solids that were present earlier was organic compounds and which is not settleable, which is not inert. It can do many things. Now the moment microorganisms like bacteria take that and convert it to something else, now that settleable solids can settle to the bottom of this uh, secondary clarifier tank. Now, on the other hand, fungi uh, is significant because fungi can, can produce a huge colony very, very fast. Fungi can produce a huge colony as well as fungi has a different food taste, bacteria has a different food taste, protozoa has a different food taste. That's why you use three different in combination. In some type of secondary wastewater treatment, people only can use bacteria. It will do your job. But sometimes using all these three together gives us a much beneficial results. That's why you use this three. Protozoa, on the other hand, they, they also provides a, a very important role in uh, role as predators and help controlling the bacterial populations. Otherwise, if the bacterial population thrives, then that bacterial population can cause that that part of the secondary clarifier into a huge reservoir of bacteria that can be really, really life threatening for the people who work there. That's why we need to use protozoa to balance the population of uh, bacteria as well. So that's why we use these three different uh, microorganisms in combination uh, to treat wastewater in secondary wastewater treatment tank. Now the process, if I if I show you, this is the picture, you know, it composed of two different segments. One is the aeration tank, another one is the secondary clarifier. In this picture, we are seeing only the submerged culture. The submerged culture is when the culture is only liquid. That means the whole wastewater is liquid and we just put all the microorganisms in that liquid medium and now uh, that medium is rotated and agitated because it's already aerated. So all the aerobic microorganisms can start doing their job. So you see, 
here after the aeration cube, it hits the secondary carry fan where the microorganisms doing their job. And as a result, the debris that are produced, which are known as uh, the flock of particles. So, flock of particles start to be settled down to the bottom of the secondary carry fire or secondary sedimentation tank. And then we can use that secondary sedimentation, I mean, all those all those flock of material, we can transfer that. We can also call it as a sludge because anything which is solid and settled to the bottom in the primary as well as secondary clarified tank are known as sludge. So the sludge that is produced this time, we generally don't take the sludge for the sludge processing. Instead, we take the sludge and we transport the sludge again to the primary settlement tank. Remember, because in the primary settlement tank, we have the first sludge produced. And in the secondary settlement tank, we have the second sludge produced. But the sludge produced in the secondary tank is rotated again, dropped in the primary tank, so that this sludge again takes the journey via the secondary process or secondary treatment of wastewater. Because we want to run this sludge or the water containing the sludge two times at least, so that the microorganisms can feast on all the organic matters that are present in the water. That's why we run it two times and sometimes three times as well. And uh, this is a uh, like chemical process that's actually continuing, uh, working like, you know, organic compounds converted to carbon dioxide, removed as a gas, water, and biomass, which is the sludge settled to the bottom. Organic nitrogen is converted to ammonium, nitrate. Organic phosphate is, phos uh, is converted to phosphate. And that's why this is the time where methane is also sometimes also released a little bit, because if you use mostly un a anaerobic bacteria, then those anaerobic bacteria always produce methane as a byproduct, and that's the kind of bad thing to produce methane. So that's why not all the wastewater treatment facilities have the anaerobic chambers for the anaerobic part of the secondary wastewater treatment. You can use aerobic and anaerobic, but mostly people use aerobic because in that case, the production of gases are carbon dioxide, nitrate, those are things, and uh, which can be released into the open air without much being involved in problem. But for anaerobic treatment of wastewater, uh, there should be separate tanks, totally closed and totally out of the uh, water and totally out of the oxygen. So that's what uh, we need to prepare for the anaerobic bacteria to grow, and it's really difficult. And sometimes we can we can use anaerobic bacteria's growth, especially in the in the what I can say attached growth. Last in this picture we saw this is the submerged growth of bacteria. But in secondary treatment, we can also use this attached growth. As I mentioned earlier, we can use a solid surface. So this is the bed medium. Bed medium is prepared with large particles like stone chips or, or rocks. Those are producing the bed media. And the bed media is in contact with anaerobic as well as aerobic uh, layer. So this layer of bacteria produce first anaerobic layer and then on top of that aerobic layer. That's the reason because aerobic layer is already protecting uh, the anaerobic layer to receive any oxygen, block them to receive any oxygen. That's why you find out anaerobic layer in very close proximity to the bed medium and then aerobic layer on top of the anaerobic layer. And this is where the water is in contact. So water is sprinkled on top of these layers and this aerobic and anaerobic bacteria, they're taking the, the nutrients from the water and slowly the water is passing through the bed medium and it's connected. So this is another uh, picture explaining the secondary clarified tank or secondary sedimentation tank of the wastewater system. You can see that in secondary tank we have this solid medium and this is a rotor and this is a pipe and this pipe you can see that these are the, the pores in the pipe through, uh, through this pores uh, water can be sprinkled on top of uh, this bed medium. Okay, So this is the closed vessel and air is always being provided and the water is sprinkled and the microorganisms, the micro, microorganism biofilm that is created on the top of the bed and media is taking up all the nutrients and doing their job. And afterwards, whatever uh, whatever debris the flux is produced or the, or the sludge is produced is settled down to the bottom and we use that sludge for the other solids handling facility of the wastewater treatment plant. So this is the idea and we can simply pump that sludge into uh, and transfer it into the primary settlement tank again. Uh, to continue this process one more time, two more time, and finally the solid handling facility. Okay. Now in this picture, I can show you the real uh, picture of this uh, attached growth. And the attached growth, you can see this. These are the secondary uh, sedimentation tank. In this case, of our attached growth, like uh, you know, wastewater treatment facility, there can be all of this attached growth facilities for secondary treatment. 
there can be all some mass growth facilities or there can be both the combination of attached growth as well as submerged culture facilities in this case the attached growth you can see that the stone chips are present uh, and these are the rotors and the pipe sprinkling of water is on the surface and as a result you can see that this whole region of the surface of of this uh, solid bed is filled with microorganisms it's filled with bacterial biofilm fungi and filled with protozoan biofilm uh, this is a zoomed in version of one kind of that, that pipe and this, this pump you can see uh, that uh, there, there are nozzles through which the water is spread across the stone chips and you can see kind of slimy layers already forming. You can see greenish tinge, that's the slimy layer that's present on the top of, of this bed and uh, this slimy layer are filled with microorganisms, they are taking out the nutrients from the sprinkling water and they are doing their job. We call this facility as a trickling filter system for microbial growth. Trickling filter system is uh, a mechanical process utilizing the attached growth facility during the secondary uh, growth or secondary treatment of wastewater in the wastewater treatment plant. In case of this trickling filter, so this is the trickling filter. So filter means this gravel filter that we produce large huge surface area and the biofilms are produced on the top, it's coating the top and the surface of this bed. And this is the pipe that produced, uh, that has a nozzle and through this nozzle the wastewater is sprinkled, trickled. So we call it trickling filter system because this nozzle is spraying the wastewater on the surface and that helps uh, the water to travel from the top of this, of this layer to the bottom of the layer. In the bottom we have the collecting duct, in the bottom we have the effluent removal uh, pipe as well as we have the sludge uh, accumulation site. Sludge is removed and the effluent is transported to the next round of the wastewater treatment. So the trickling filter system is a very, very unique one. And another very important uh, system that is used in case of uh, the secondary treatment is known as activated sludge process. Uh, I have already told you that, but I haven't talked about this term. Activated sludge is uh, kind of synonymously used in secondary treatment of wastewater, while the sludge which is produced in the secondary clarifier is taking the journey through uh, the primary clarifier and again through the secondary clarifier for the second time is known as activated sludge because the sludge that is produced still contains some organic materials still can help the growth of some microorganisms so our goal in the secondary wastewater treatment is to reduce the amount of organic material as much as we can and uh, if we can if this sludge takes the journey another time, one more time, the chances of reducing the organic material is even more. That's why we continue with this process for the next round. That's why we call it activated sludge because the sludge that is present is now activated. Okay, so sludge is activated. That's why we call it activated sludge process. And activated sludge, as well as the trickling filter system, both work side by side in the secondary treatment of wastewater and that's how it concludes the secondary wastewater treatment. We do secondary wastewater treatment to actually reduce the contaminants of the wastewater, not the visible large particles, but those particles that we cannot see, the dissolved organic compounds of the water which are really, really toxic for our health. So reduce them with the help of utilizing the combination of bacteria, fungi and protozoa. And that's the most important point of the secondary wastewater treatment, okay? So that is regarding the secondary wastewater treatment. If you like this video, please hit the like button, share this video with your friends, subscribe to my channel to get even more videos like that. And do not forget to watch the next video of this series where I'm going to talk about the journey of the effluent to the tertiary wastewater treatment or the chemical wastewater treatment. And then we'll also talk about all the sludge uh, that is produced and what happens to those sludge and how we modify those sludge to finally add it to the landfill so that none of this process goes to end waste. So stay tuned and watch the series.